So this is your family tree on Ancestry.com. A simple display on a computer, uncovering a past that I was completely unaware of. My maternal grandfather, Melvin. With your grandfather, Melvin, did you know your grandfather? Very much. We pick up his history at the start of the First Great War. In 1917 and 1918, more than 24 million U.S. men registered for the draft, and among them was your grandfather. So this is his World War I draft registration card. But my grandfather did not join the Army right away. And then right here it says, do you claim exemption from the draft? And he says, yes. Yes. And the reason why telephone service and a broken knee. Yeah. Anastasia tells me being a telephone repairman was a critical job and would have exempted Melvin from the draft. He did join up, but not until the end of the war. When he's drafted in, 19, in September of 1918, he's drafted right before the war ends. We looked for his service records and we did find some service records for him, but they don't tell us very much. About so that's a dead end, but historic census records are a treasure trove revealing great new detail. This is the White's family right here, and here is your grandfather, Melvin. And he is, what, six years old at this point? Yeah, 1894. It's almost to the Civil War. They're all from Germany for him. I'll be darned. And a surprise. Notice the birth month and year of the grandchildren. They were twins. Your grandfather was a twin. I'll be darned. Did you have any idea? Huh. Have you ever heard of... Hazel? No. I also learned there's a note of sadness that runs through my family history. So Joseph, who is the father of two six-year-old twins, is widowed. And we know that his wife, her name was Mary. She died when the kids were five. She died a year before the census. By the time he was 21, both parents were dead. As I learn about my great-great-grandfather, John White's, some tragedy is never far off. Born in Germany in 1843, he came to America when he was nine or 10. His mother died the day after he was born in Germany. So she basically, we'd probably consider that death by complications of childbirth. So I kind of see some parallels between your grandfather Melvin and your great-great-grandfather, John, that they both lose their mothers very young. Later in life, he becomes the head of a large household. He has 14 children and has to care for his wife and 10 living children and two grandchildren on disability from the war wound. A stunning photo leads to more clues. We know that John He's buried in Dubuque, Iowa. This How is his did you get that? We found it on the internet. I mean, you're kidding. And the grave marker, Company E, Iowa Infantry, a regiment of the Civil War. And when he was 19 years old, he signed up to serve in the Union Army. Here's a picture of John. This is your second great-grandfather. Kind of looks like Nicolas Cage. It's his history that led me to Fort Monroe. Is that why we're here? That's why we're here. I find out that he was wounded in the shoulder, shot with a musket ball at the Battle of the Black River Bridge in Vicksburg, Mississippi. After a four month recovery from the gunshot wound, he rejoins his unit for two years. In 1864, he's transferred to Fort Monroe to be a guard protecting slaves running away from the South. It's a Union fort in a southern state. He does this through 1865. He's on leave from his detachment because he's serving as a guard here for the prisoner fort, fort at Fort Monroe. He never got more than a private, though. <laughs> I was blown away at the difficult service that he faced and proud that he, my grandfather, and myself all share a history of military service. This is how it ties here. together. It all ties together. You know, I have to say, John, your second great grandfather, I think he was a very remarkable person. I think you come from a strong line of fighters. Mm -hmm.